Hello, my name is Guy Wallace, and I'd like to present to you Analysis Data Drives Lesson Mapping. This is part of my PAC processes for training and development, learning, and knowledge management. PAC includes five ISD methodology sets. First, there's a common analysis methodology set that feeds three levels of instructional design. I also include project planning and management tools and templates across all three levels of design efforts. The three levels of design in PACT include CAD, Curriculum Architecture Design, which produces performance-based training and development paths. Second, my version of ADDI is Modular Curriculum Development, MCD. It produces performance-based modular T&D events. And third, Instructional Activity Development, or IAD, which produces performance-based training and development content and performance support. IAD is actually a subset of MCD. All of this is covered in my 1999 book, Lean ISD. I began the book in 1983 and because of my consulting experiences, kept at it until 1999 when I decided to finally publish it. The cover was designed by one of my mentors, the late Gary Rumler. In 2002, Lean ISD received an ISPI award for instructional communications. In 2011, I took Lean ISD and four other books and updated them and reconfigured them into this six-pack. The very first version of what became the Lesson Map was created in 1990 for a project for Illinois Bell on labor relations training. In the fall of 1993, my organization published this format in our newsletter, Pursuing Performance. Our focus in this presentation is on the Lesson Map of instructional activities. There are two types of data that feed the construction of a lesson map of instructional activities and a third type of analysis data that also influences the development post-design. First, there's the performance data that's captured in a performance model that helps articulate the key outputs and measures of performance, the key tasks of performance, the various roles and responsibilities of the performers, and a gap analysis which addresses the typical performance gaps and the probable causes. In the Enabling Knowledge and Skills category, we capture individual knowledge and skill items and link them back to the areas of performance and capture other data that will influence the design, the construction of the lesson map. The performance model sometimes can be quite complex in trying to capturing all of the performance of a job or a function or a process. But sometimes it's as simple as one chart of performance model with one output as the focus with the related tasks. The areas of performance segment performance for analysis purposes. The performance model chart captures the outputs and tasks, roles, responsibilities, and the gaps and their causes. The enabling knowledge and skill categories, of which I sometimes use up to 17 in any one project, provide a structure for systematically deriving these enablers using the performance model as the benchmark. The knowledge and skill matrices capture these knowledge and skills as they are derived. The performance data and the enabling knowledge and skills data is then used to assess existing training and development for potential reuse purposes. We are trying to salvage the shareholders' prior investments in training and development going forward. All of that is captured on an existing training and development assessment form. In the design arena in MCD or IAD, there are three types of design blueprints, if you will. 
the event map of lessons, and then for each lesson there's a lesson map of instructional activities, and for each activity there's an instructional activity specification which captures all of the analysis data as it feeds forward into the design processes. Again, the three types of analysis data include performance data, knowledge and skill data, and existing training and development assessment data. These all feed the lesson map of instructional activities. Let's focus on the performance analysis data. The performance model and gap analysis feed the construction of the lesson objectives. There could be more than one for any one lesson. It also helps identify what are the application exercises with practice that may be required. Sometimes these application exercises can also be the final test, a competency development test, if you will. We also can identify if there are demonstrations that would help the learner performer in the application exercises so they can see what they're going to be expected to do. The knowledge and skill analysis identify which knowledge and skills feed which areas of performance and those outputs and tasks. Third, the existing training and development assessment data help us understand what is already in place that we can either reuse as is or after modification. In this example, these existing training and development assessment forms help capture that data and show us where we might use it as is or after modification. It's important to have these three types of data before one begins constructing the lesson map of instructional activities. There are times when I've started a client meeting discussing their request for training and development by asking these questions. And sometimes I will leap to their whiteboard and draw out a lesson map and capture it in front of them as I ask the questions. First I asked about the learning objectives and then trying to shift it from learning to performance, I asked them to help articulate the performance objectives. What will the learner be able to do after the lesson is completed? This helps me identify performance-based learning objectives. Next, I ask about the kinds of application exercises that will be necessary to help really build skills and the confidence to help ensure that there's transfer back to the job. Next, I ask whether or not it would be helpful for the learner to see the expected performance prior to participating in any exercises. Then I ask what information needs to be presented prior to the demonstration and application exercises. Then I'll ask what content already exists that can help us speed and accelerate the development efforts. Most of the time, the clients quickly realize that they do not have the insight for this, which allows me to shift the conversation into how shall we conduct formal analysis prior to the design, prior to the development of the instruction. But I always end the conversation with what barriers exist to desired transfer back to the job. This goes hand in hand with my belief that we should begin with the end in mind and then immediately focus on transfer back to the job. I have several resources, including these books, which we discussed a little bit earlier. Lean ISD, which is available as a Kindle book and as a paperback book and as a free PDF. Then there's the six pack, which are available as Kindles as well or paperback books. First, there's the Curriculum Manager Handbook intended for the supervisor or manager of an instructional design shop. Then there's the Analysis of Performance Competence Requirements, which is intended to help the analysts in the effort. Then there's two books for designers, one at the Curriculum Architectural Design level and the second book, Modular Curriculum Development, which covers both MCD and IAD for the design and development of content. 
The fifth book, Management Areas of Performance Competence, help one see how one might tackle an entire department and the managers of those departments or the participants in those departments, the individual contributors. The sixth book, From Training to Performance Improvement Consulting, addresses how one might move an organization from simply doing training to performance-based training to actual performance improvement consulting which may or may not include instruction as one of the interventions. PACT itself is a subset of EPI, Enterprise Process Performance Improvement. I wanted my methodologies for instructional design to be easily extended beyond instruction, beyond the knowledge and skills that are required, to all of the variables necessary to impact performance at a process level which rolls up to an organization level, which rolls up to the entire enterprise. The focus is performance competence, the ability to perform tasks to produce outputs to stakeholder requirements, whether that's at the individual level, the team level, the process level, the department level, the function level, or the enterprise level. It's all about performance competence. I created this lesson map back in 1990 so that I could have both a capture and report format for use with my facilitated group process, which I'd been using in my curriculum architecture design efforts going back to 1982. I've always preferred to conduct both analysis and design with a team of master performers using my facilitated group process, and then reporting back to them the data in the same format that it was captured. It made it easier and gave them more confidence in their reviews of the data if it was familiar. PACT, performance-based, accelerated, customer and stakeholder driven, training and development of any blend. I hope you'll take a look at Lean ISD and the many other resources I have on my website. Thank you.